What's going on guys? My name is Zed and welcome to this video. This is last week I watched number five. And uh, before I get into this, I do want to say <clears throat> these videos are usually long, but I'm going to try to start practicing making them a little bit shorter. Uh, because I know a half hour long is just, it's just too long. Uh, so I'm going to try to keep this under 10 minutes, but as this is the first time I'm doing this, it might go a little bit longer, but here's the hoping. So I started off the week with Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, and this movie is fantastic. It's the perfect blend between uh, special effects and practical effects. Um, they have huge sets, giant puppets. Uh, they do great stuff with uh, blue screen. Um, <clears throat> it's just so, it's so much uh, visual stimulus. It's, it's kind of hard to believe it's from what year? Uh, it's from uh, 1989. I mean, it's just, it's amazing. I love it. Rick Moranis at probably one of his best uh, roles. Uh, I love Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. And that's why I gave it four out of five stars. <clears throat> Next up, we have Honey, I Blew Up the Kid, uh, which is okay. Uh, since my first viewing, my chain, my um, my thoughts on the movie have changed. Uh, but overall, I don't feel like it captured the scope that the original did. Uh, because <clears throat> instead of having to build these wild sets and wild props and wild um, puppets, um, it was basically just a um, compositing a giant baby onto regular side sets. Now they did have a giant like baby costume uh, that I'm guessing a very tall man wore for particular scenes, and they did make a like giant uh, plush uh, rabbit props. But overall, it just didn't ha it didn't um, didn't capture the scope that the original did. I still enjoyed it, and in retrospect, I I think the movie really is great in its final act. Um, uh, but besides that, I gave uh, Honey I Blew Up the Kids two and a half out of five stars. And then we have Honey We Shrunk Ourselves, which is the third and final movie in the Shrunk franchise franchise and uh this movie fucking sucks it it does it feels like a direct to vhs or a disney channel original movie it is just not good <clears throat> it, this movie came out almost 10 years after the original honey i shrunk the kids and the special effects look worse and that's because they're trying to bring in newer effects which at the time probably were like they, they were groundbreaking to use these CGI animations and uh, to use these new uh, blue screen techniques and there's probably a lot of groundbreaking technology in this movie but in retrospect it's harder to appreciate um, because it does look so rudimentary and it does look so bad um, they use CGI cockroaches and and uh, Daddy Long Legs. And don't get me started with the Daddy Long Legs. The two uh, mother characters kept on calling the Daddy Long Legs Daddy repeatedly. Like, oh, Daddy, you know, we're gonna save you, Daddy. Daddy, can you give us a ride, Daddy? Dad, are you fucking kidding me? Who wrote this script? Honey, We Shrunk Ourselves, one and a half stars. One of my lowest reviews. This movie isn't terrible to the point where I'm like, do not watch it, this movie fucking sucks. But Jesus Christ, compared to the other two, this movie is like... It... it I don't even want to say it. I don't even want to say it. Next up, we have Sonic the Hedgehog, which... Uh, has gone through some some uh, giant development changes uh, months and months ago uh, when the first trailer came out. Uh, fans were not pleased, and the studio heard them out and said, you know what, we agree with you. Uh, we are going to uh, redesign Sonic and try to bring you a more faithful adaptation. And they did, and I really enjoyed this movie. It was a lot of fun. Really funny, great performances, and Sonic looked really good. I don't care to have these video game characters really come to life, really be as realistic as they tried to portray him as. And when they decided, you know what, we fucked up, we're going to just bring the comic book version, or the comic book, the uh, video game version in, the movie shined. I didn't. It didn't look strange to me to have this uh, this uh, video game character in this real world. It's already a strange concept enough. 
Uh, so when you actually gave a real um, interpretation of Sonic, not a real interpretation, but when you actually uh, brought in um, uh, the real look of Sonic from the video games, it just made the movie so much better. Um, so yeah, that's why I gave Sonic the Hedgehog four out of five stars. I really enjoyed it. It's really good. And then I watched Birds of Prey, or Harley, Kim, Harley Quinn Birds of Prey, or Harley Quinn and the uh, Fantabulous Emancipation of One Harley Quinn, or there's like 30 different titles for this movie. Um, and I'm here to say that I'm kind of disappointed that I didn't like this movie as much as I thought I was going to. It's not that it's a bad movie. It's not. It's actually pretty good. Um, but it didn't feel like the Harley Quinn that I got to know during the Suicide Squad, or Suicide Squad, sorry. Um, I really enjoyed this Harley Quinn. I thought Margot Robbie did brilliantly uh, as, as Harley Quinn in this movie, and the reimagining of her really felt good for the universe and the tone they were setting up. And this Harley Quinn felt different, um, and I, I can't put my finger on it exactly. But overall, it's a good movie. I enjoyed it. There's, uh, there's particular characters like um, Black Canary that I really, really enjoyed. Um, I really enjoyed Black Canary. I thought she was a great character, and I liked how they differed her from the, her comic book uh, counterpart. Though I wish they would have let her use her powers way more. Um, she only uses her powers once in the entire movie, and that one time basically took the wind out of her, and she was kind of out of commission. Which sucks, because when you're making a comic book movie, I'm fine with, you know, um, f from uh, getting away from the character. But when you have movies like Deadpool that are so uh, comic accurate and they really try to be faithful, and then you have a character who is in a comic book movie, they have superpowers, they're well known, but when they use their powers, they are out of commission. Like that, I just hate that kind of style of writing. Um, uh, and then there's another character that I absolutely fucking despise in this movie. Not despise, but I think that it's just terrible. And that's Huntress. Uh, which sucks, because I love the actress, uh, Mary Elizabeth Winstead. Um, I think she's a fantastic actress, but her her uh, role as a Huntress was just dog trash. And that sucks. Um, I've heard otherwise. Some people li love Huntress, hate Black Canary. Some people uh, hate Black Canary, love Huntress. Um, did I just say the same thing twice? I don't know. And then some people just enjoyed the movie overall. I just, I couldn't get behind the portrayal of Huntress. She just was laughable. Um, but that is Birds of Prey. I did enjoy the movie. I feel like with subsequent viewings, I might have an altered view on it. Uh, but as of right now, I gave it three and a half out of five stars. Whoops. Just knocked Harley Quinn over. Uh, next up we have 1917. Now, I, I already reviewed these movies in a separate video, uh, a four war films review video, uh, but keep it simple. It's a very great story. It's a technical achievement. I highly recommend it. These characters are, 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 you get to know these characters on such a deep level in the trenches of war. Fantastic movie. I give uh, 1917 uh, five out of five stars. And then I watched Super, which is a James Gunn film, uh, mentioning the, the Suicide Squad earlier. Uh, James Gunn has made quite a handful of superhero movies, including Super, which just had its 10th anniversary. I did not know this at the time of viewing it, that like two days later it would be 10 years old. Um, but this movie is basically about a guy, a superhero, played by Rain Wilson, who's not a superhero right now, but he's just an average Joe. Um, he really... Um, he really kind of maps his life out in three different uh, scenarios. And these are like the best moments of his life. And one of those moments was marrying his wife. Well, his wife ends up leaving him and he thinks the best course of action is to become a superhero to try to win her back. Never in my life would I ever have thought that Rain Wilson would be wearing a red leather superhero outfit, but he does. And this movie is actually pretty compelling. It's strange, it's weird. Uh, definitely has some moments in you're like, what the fuck? Um, but overall, it's actually quite emotional. Um, and uh, for that, I gave Super 3 out of 5 stars. And then I watched The Love Bug. The original Disney's The Love Bug, which is a part of the wide variety of Herbie movies out there. Um, this movie is pretty good. I think Herbie, as a character, was the absolute best. And a great technical achievement. 
he's like a giant car puppet that they had on like springs and tracks and they had the doors motorized, the steering wheel, mo like this thing was a giant puppet and it was brilliant. I love the character of Herbie. But this movie does come out, uh, or did come out in the uh, late 60s, and thus when it has, uh, thus uh, it treats its Japanese characters a bit racially insensitive. And I think this, uh, if you can overlook that and just kind of see it as part of the time, you'll probably enjoy it. There were several times where it kind of took me out of the movie, I'm like, ugh, that's, that's kind of a bit insensitive, but uh, okay. Uh, but overall, I think Herbie Full Loaded is a good time for the whole family. Um, just uh, maybe not bring around your very uh, sensitive family members uh, because I think uh, they'll probably have a strongly worded letter to write to Disney uh, 50 years later. <laughs> uh, and then I watched, the only movie I actually watched that I own in my collection was Saving Private Ryan. Um, and this movie... Is fantastic again I already reviewed this in my four war film review video um, but the first 20 minutes alone of this movie is worth the watch it's about a three hour long movie how long is it yeah it's almost three hours long and the first 20 minutes is worth worth the runtime it's th it's probably the best depiction of war on film ever and that's the, the, the depiction of D-Day the storming the storming of the beaches of Normandy fantastic so compelling and uh without and, and steven spielberg doesn't um uh doesn't put a score on the actual battle and he lets the sounds of war and the crying and the the, the perishing <coughs> soldiers to really be the orchestra uh because it's truly terrifying because you really get to experience what kinds of sounds and sights uh these veterans experienced and it's truly tragic, um, and that's why I gave um, Saving Private Ryan five out of five stars. And then we have Fury, which again, I reviewed in my other uh, four war film review video, uh, but a short sweet synopsis, um, or review. Uh, basically, uh, this movie follows um, one, two, three, four, five tank operators uh, during uh, World War II. And uh, I feel like I got attached to these characters the most. Um, and uh, though there are a couple inaccuracies with the way it portrays, uh, portrays World War II, um, overall, I really enjoyed this movie. I did. I think it's a really dark and gritty look at what these operators had to go through. So I gave Fury four out of five stars. And then I watched Tron. And Tron as a movie, I think is, again, a very big technical achievement. Uh, it, it's groundbreaking use of CGI and backlit animation really makes it one of a kind movie. Um, and uh, for that, I don't think we'll ever get a movie just like Tron again. Um, but the story is very lackluster. It does not have a great script. I did go and watch the making of Tron after watching this movie because I wanted to gain a new appreciation for it. Uh, but overall, I just gained more of appreciation for the world building, the, yeah, the world building and the special effects and not much for the story. The story is very lackluster. And then I watched Tron Legacy, which, uh, for me, Tron Legacy was to me what Tron was for the kids of the 80s. I loved Tron Legacy growing up. I was absolutely mind blown that a world like this could exist. That somebody actually thought up a concept like this and they brought it to film. And for that, I'll always be, uh, I, I'll always have a very soft space, soft space in my heart for this movie. Um, do I think the story is good? It's better than Tron. Um, but overall, I think it's visual shine more than the actual story itself. And that's why I gave Tron Legacy three and a half out of five stars. And then last but not least, hey, we're going to be maybe under 15 minutes or a little over 15 minutes. But last but not least, I have three Christs. Three Christs, it kind of hits home for me. Uh, it is, um, this, this set of events, this, this study took place in my hometown of Ypsilanti, Michigan. And, uh, lots of different references to my hometown really kind of brought this movie, uh, together for me. Um, I really enjoyed it. I know overall a lot of critics and a lot of reviewers did not. Um, that's unfortunate. But throughout, I was very compelled emotionally, 
um, I was compromised quite a few times. I definitely teared up quite a few times throughout. Um, but that's the three Christ. I don't want to talk about that movie too much, but I do recommend it. I think you should give it its due, uh, its due diligence and or due diligence. I think you should give it a shot. Just watch it. I mean, it's, it's a pretty short watch. I think it's like an hour and a half, so not too bad. So there we go. I actually did it under a half hour long. Thank you for watching. I hope you all enjoyed. And until next time, guys, I'll be seeing you later. Peace.